Mark, um, showing where the gate is, and this is Rocky Hill Road here, where the gate is, where the path is. Um, well, there's a couple of, you'll notice that in that, that there are two um, different designs for the guardrail next to the gate. Um, and we really didn't have a, um, a preference one way or the other. One of them is, uh, has two rails, one of them has one rail. We believe the one rail is better, but we're willing, if people think it looks better, to have the two rail, we are willing to do that. So that's basically a design of the gate that would go at the Rocky Hill Road site. Um, and attached to that is the plan of where it would um, where it would be on that edge. So you are allowing for, the, for what is that, 29 feet? So you're going to be using it to bring in mowers? Or we are not. We are not using it, I don't believe. Um, but there is the, some of the neighbors had asked that there be an access strip that gets to walk down, and I believe that's why it's shown. I thought people were asking there not be an access there. I think it was no parking for people to come. Um, we we yeah. will yes. Neil Abrams from so Neil Abrams from Five Colleges. So we asked for permission from National Heritage to allow emergency access, not knowing if there would ever be a need for emergency emergency vehicle access. So this gate would allow that emergency vehicle access. But this is in an area that Natural Heritage has identified as part of the habitat to be managed uh, for endangered species. And so under normal operations, no motorized vehicles, uh, no horses, no, um, no dogs off leash. Uh, so th this is part of the managed habitat. And so we would not, not be used for access for maintenance. So we do that on the, the other trail. And at the time that we started this, we had imagined that the neighbor's interest in using the trails justified having a trail that had a trail in. in the conversations more recently, there was a thought that should not be even special access to the And in that case, the sign would say no pedestrian access. And uh, the trail, per se, would not extend up there. It would just be kept with low shrubs and black grasses so that if there were ever emergency vehicle access. Maybe. How would you plan to propose to get an emergency vehicle in there in any meaningful way? I mean, it's how many hundreds of feet from the building with no grading, no pavement? No. It's pretty hard soil. And so it, it's simply a contingency to allow that, but we would not use it for maintenance. Uh, we would use maintenance access from the uh, the main driveway and the, the trail paths that are shown within the, uh, the area. And the letters that we've gotten from your uh, public safety people, the fire department have indicated that they're comfortable with the one access, that we don't need that. But as part of the, uh, the uh, work with Natural Heritage, it was discussed and it is available to be there if people require it. The fire department has not requested that we do that. So it, is there any kind of a path from there right now up to there? Where this gate is proposed or possible, mm -hmm. is there any kind of a roadway there now? There is recently, there's been some sumac up there, correct? Recently, one of the neighbors brushed off the whole tunnel that runs up to the front of the Rocky Hill Road, but there's not a path per se. And, and we did, that has not, that cutting had nothing to do with us. Okay, so if you, stop this person or people from cutting, there's basically no way a vehicle can get in there. Is that a correct thing without cutting something out? Because it's managed habitat, we have to manage it to have a mix of grass and low shrubs uh, for, the, for the habitat management. So a vehicle could come in because it, we could not allow woody growth as part of the habitat management plan. Okay, so, so the soup, so, if I'm incorrect in my comment, tell me. So the sumac and stuff will need to be cleared out of there and grass and small shrubbery planted. Under the Habitat Management Plan, the Natural Heritage has tentatively said they will approve. It would be occasional shrubs. And then that would, that would make it possible to drive a vehicle out there. 
it would be possible, yes. Because, because of that. If you don't put this gate, would it it'd be, I mean, I, I, I'm just thinking that the gate is going to encourage something. Right. If where there's no gate and there's no traffic there now, again, it's, it's, you're not, you're, we're not comparing apples to apples here because right now it's sumac, it's, 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 it's junk. Right. It's, 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 it's like a jungle. Of course, when you're, it's not fair. It's when you're fair. done, it will be more of a semi-open plain. That's right. So, so I think we could agree, if that were a restriction you wish, that there not be a gate. We can build a guardrail. Um, it was simply a, in the early part of the permit into natural heritage and conservation, one thought, and I wasn't involved, so I was speculating, but thought that someone might require another access. But we have no interest in it. We have relatively so, so few cars. No, so far, if this is approved, nobody has expressed an interest in the second thing. So if you're going to put anything there, I would just put a solid gate, solid fence, and no, no access. Don't even hint that there could be access. Mm -hmm. we'd, be happy. Yep, we'd be happy to do that. And that, if, if the board agrees that that's the way it would be, you can forget about the next picture, which is possible signage at that site to restrict the use of it. But if we're going to do um, the guardrail, then we don't need the signage as to the managed habitat. Is that correct? Well, we might need it if you want us to further discourage uh, access. Yeah, uh, I, I would. Yeah. It, it's conservation land, so for, we might for, have I mean, say for the time being, I would say no signage, but maybe down the road you might need it, depending what you start seeing for, for and traffic. What we gave you with a foot traffic. What we gave you was a rendering of a possible sign. Yeah. And that it's, uh, doesn't have all the words on it, whether it says, you know, no trespassing or whether it says, you know, just what can be done there. That's the sign that, or the design of the sign that we would use if it became necessary. <clears throat> and, uh, I think the last thing you asked for was we had a fairly lengthy discussion on screening and how could we screen it and how can we design that screening now not knowing what's there and maybe it would make some sense to, uh, to come up with a somewhat of a unique way to make certain that it is properly screened um, once the building is built. So we did come up with an agreement um, that is uh, Basically, the, the tenor of it is that the uh, applicant would put into escrow a sum of money with the, with the town, and that money would be used once the building was built and everybody had an opportunity to look at it without leaves, then this money would be available to both screen the building up closely or to screen it on neighbors' properties, have paid for them to put screening on their properties. Um, so, in order to figure out what that number might be, we got a price for um, uh, red cedar trees. Uh, we looked at a number of different kinds of trees. The red cedar uh, is a, a good tree to screen, um, and we looked at various sizes and the number that we would need. So basically what we did was we took the building and designed these red cedar trees to be planted 20 feet on center. Some of them fairly large, 10 foot, 8 to 10 feet. Some of them more like 4 to 6 feet. So they would be varying trees. And we took three sides of the building, the northeast and west side, and put those trees 20 feet on center. And that comes up with a number. Um, and so the way we figured this was we'll take the, that number of trees 20 feet on center, $500 a piece for the larger ones, $200 a piece for the smaller ones, put them all the way around phase one, phase two, and phase three. And that number comes to approximately $20,000 worth of trees. So we don't think that's necessarily the right way to landscape it, but it gives us a sum of money that would cover it for however long this goes, we believe. Um, and what we proposed in the agreement is that we would take on the obligation of meeting with the neighbors once this is the building is up, if it's constructed, and discussing their landscaping needs and desires, and hopefully coming to a consensus, but you know, not certain that we could. 
Um, and then that plan would be presented to this board, and this board would decide what they wanted. But there would be this $22,500 would be there. So if, if for some reason the board wanted to spend a lot of it on the first phase, then that's what would happen. If <clears throat> it turned out that it wasn't that visible and they wanted to spend a little on the first phase, then there would be more for phase two and three. But it, hopefully the neighbors would decide who needed things planted on their land to shield them and how much would be planted up against the building. But basically we've selected a species that grows one and a half to two feet a year. And, well, I could be nice to get show you the real Oh, okay. We have them here. <clears throat> so, our thought is that really the number of trees was just a way to come to a number to figure out what was a fair number. Um, this shows three sides. Obviously, if this phase is built, these come out and go here, and if this phase is built, these come out and go there. Um, if possible, they, they may not. But the proposal is to put the $22,500 into an account that the neighbors and the applicant will come up with a plan, and then obviously the board has to be the ultimate arbiter or the ultimate decider on the plan. But we think that a mixture of trees against the building and trees perhaps like if this fellow doesn't have a lot of screening here some here might be helpful um, and a, a mix of doing it that way so basically um, the, the, that's the plan for the, the screening and landscaping we think that the building will be fairly invisible during the summer to most people will become more visible in the winter, but not all that visible. And it makes a lot more sense to wait until it's constructed before anybody decides, well, put up 37, you know, red cedars. Um, but the money will be there and the board would have the authority under that agreement to order that it be done. You'll see attached to that a, a small version of this and also a copy, Mr. Mikowski is looking at it now, a copy of some other trees that we considered, some weren't native, some didn't grow fast, some weren't bushy. Um, so that's why the uh, the red cedar was selected. So is the 20,000 just for phase one or is for that? It's for, for the entire project. The entire project. Yeah. We calculated it out and uh, we have uh, the number of trees that it goes out and it comes up to about 20,000 and then some extra, if you, if you did it all, and then some extra for here. But it's available and the board may and the neighbors may decide that they want to spend a lot of it on phase one um, or not very much depending on what it looks like. But it is for the entire project. Yeah. You don't want juniper on your property. Man. That's like fucking prickle bushes all over the place. <laughs> and that's what we selected if a neighbor happened to say, I want whatever, a U. Fine, the money's there to do you know, it's got to be within reason, of course, because mm -hmm. your board will determine how this gets spent. Okay. <clears throat> now, like any legal agreement, there are probably some things that could be changed or negotiated there, and obviously our view of it is we're going to spend that money to sh screen the building, and uh, so if the board has any concerns about the way it's written or how it's written, um, obviously we're willing to talk about it. One issue um, <clears throat> that I am aware of is that the town would probably not want to hold it as the escrow agent. Um, I have talked with the town treasurer who uh, is trying to clear, he's trying to clear out uh, security deposit accounts and performance security accounts because they have to be accounted for to the auditors and it's it's just more work for no real gain. Mm -hmm. uh, so. Um, we, I'm certain we can find somebody to hold it. Whether, sure we can. Whether just, it be a, just giving you some guidance. Yeah, whether it be a representative of the neighborhood and a representative of the uh, applicant, whatever, we can find a way to make certain that it is there and it is available. 
<clears throat> Comment from the board. Any new ones? No, no. Is this going to be uh, in addition to the performance bond? Uh, yes. Or, mm -hmm. or are we going to have a separate performance bond? This is, we'll, we may not need a performance bond because well, of what Bill the inspector can do. Well, this is uh, we have that option, so this may be one we. This has nothing to do with the performance bond. This I, oh, I, I know it yes, doesn't, okay. but uh, I want to make it clear that uh, that if, do we want a performance bond or are we going to go with a building inspector? I think we find out what the motion is first. Make sure if the motion passes, we can, okay. we can, we can uh, negotiate on that bond if we need one. Anything else? Any comments from the audience? New comments? Yes. Yes, ma'am. I'm Nancy Vanderman Boyle from High Meadow Road. I'm the one almost near the cul-de-sac. Um, $22,500 with cedar does not seem to be a huge amount. Um, it, it, it really, sometimes cedars fail, they, they um, die, and it does seem like that, even though they're 20 feet off center, I, I'm not sure that that's enough. In landscaping terms, it doesn't seem like a lot. In terms of the neighbors on Rocky Hill and then the buildings themselves. So I just question that amount of money. I'm not sure it's enough. That's about 50 trees, roughly. There, there is a factor in there for uh, trees that don't survive, but I'm certain that the board will, in addition to that, will they have a standard um, phrase that for those that do die, that they be replaced. That would, and that's generally a condition in the permit. So I think, although we did have a mortality factor in our figures, I think they will require that we replace any that do not make it um, with uh, funds other than the escrow. Oh, okay. And, and really what, what we did, ma'am, was we, we just tried to figure out what, because we were directed to go out and get a number. And so mm -hmm. this seemed to be a reasonable way to get a number. I mean, maybe when it's built, the neighborhood does say, yeah, we want trees every 20 feet along here. Or maybe there's a part of it that, no, we don't. We'd rather have them higher up or, or maybe, mm -hmm. I doubt it, but maybe not at all. Mm -hmm. But it seemed to be a number that would do the job for the entire project, not just for phase one. Mm -hmm. The entire project may very well never be built, depending on how the growth of the college is in the books. You know, we think it will be. That's why we're asking for it. But it's going to be way off in the future. Yes, is somewhere, and it's a wild guess, but I guess it's somewhere between 10 and 30 years. Of the total built? The before it's totally built up. Before it's totally built out. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma um, you talk about phase one, two, and three. What's the overall size if all those phases are complete? 74,350 square feet. With all three buildings? With all yes. three yes. phases? Yes. Um, it was my understanding when I went to a meeting at the five colleges that um, the, they needed 12 acres because they wanted to, they, the building was going to be much larger. I'm thinking now, if it's not going to be that large, could they consider another spot, for instance, in the business park where there's acreage available? And also, I understand that um, part of a three story building is becoming vacant in the business park. And I wondered if they might consider another site instead of the agricultural land in Hadley. Um. Many sites have been considered. Um, it's a relatively complex process of borings and figuring out what will support it and where it, a lot goes into it. And I have, you probably noticed in watching, I've resisted getting into why this site, why that site, why not this site, because there are millions of sites. But this process has been going on for, I believe, over two years. 
there's been eight, 10 or 12 sites looked at. Some of them have had borings done to see if they could support this building. Some of them have had other issues, but um, believe me, they have looked for sites. Um, and this is where we are, and this is what we're requesting. Anybody else? Yes, sir. Hi, uh, I'm Brian Ogilvie. I live on Mount Warner Road, so I won't be uh, a neighbor of this project, but um, the traffic on Maple Street will affect me. Um, I'm also a history prof at UMass and a member of the Research Library Council. And given what I've read uh, in uh, the newspaper um, about some previous meetings concerning the annex, um, and what I know from my position on the Research Library Council, I just wanted to come and speak in favor of building an annex. Um, the integrated five college library collection is one of the real strengths of the whole five college system. Um, I, it's obvious that the UMass library is tall, but a lot of people don't know that Smith has one of the largest college libraries in the country, and Amherst and Mount Holyoke also have very impressive collections. And one of the great things for me as a teacher and a scholar is access to all of those libraries' collections. Um, the annex is going to preserve a deduplicated collection of material coming from all five collections. Uh, and I think it's important to keep material close um, to the campuses, um, just like the annex is doing right, or, sorry, just like the bunker is doing right now, um, having the annex close uh, to Amherst, uh, to uh, Smith, Mount Holyoke, Hampshire, uh, and UMass um, will allow future researchers and students easy access to the material um, uh, for their teaching, for their research. And I know that we don't know which of that material will be used, um, but we know that it will be used, some of it. Uh, and I think that having uh, something close uh, is going to be important to us. So I just, I wanted to address the utility of the material and it's important for teaching and research. Um, you know, a lot of people say it's just books, why do we need to keep them? But in fact, um, we don't know which books will be important in the future. That's why it's important to preserve uh, a copy of uh, every one that we place there. Say that. Anybody else? Yes, sir. Hello, Mandler, uh, Rocky Hill Road. Um, just in response to that, we're we're not against the establishment of a library, and it's, we're just opposed to the site. Why is it not on a campus? That has not been answered to our satisfaction. That's a question that been asked a bunch of times and they've answered it a number of different ways and it's the site that we're dealing with and I mean what we have we have to deal with what's in front of us and that's a question that you know they, they, they've taken they tried to address as best they can and we have got to deal with what's in front of us was the only point of view and we understand your question anybody else Yes. Yeah, I did. I, so, is that truly brown? That yeah, color it really looks great to me. It's a gray color. This it is, is a gray color. It's, it's, like it, it's not brown. No. It is. And, and the drawings, the elevations look browner. It's cement. Can you hold that? Yeah. It looks like it's it's like the elevations look browner than that that sample. It looks pretty close. One of the things with the elevation, because I asked the question, wow. one of the questions is that the, the programs that do these elevations, they there are different tints as you go along because they're doing some sunlight, some shade, and so it, it's different. But this, you know, is... Could you put that up higher, Pete? Yes, I can. Get on the other side. I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> I'm in your way. <laughs> and of course, we won't have fluorescent lighting. <laughs> yeah. Who knows? <clears throat> and you know, one of the things is that this this color was selected through so many meetings that Neil had with uh, with neighbors. Um, you know, the, frankly, five colleges is not wedded to brown, gray, green. There was a number of colors selected, uh, presented to the neighbors, and it seemed that this is what was requested. 
Um, we are certainly not opposed to if somebody says, well, we want it a little browner, they first done. They make them a little browner, I assume. <laughs> but we thought that this was what the neighborhood had selected. What neighbors were they? What neighbors were they? Oh, I never saw them. I, I was there, and okay. I, I, you know, and, and Neil, really, you, you did. You had a great job of the red and the brown and gray, and but that really does seem grayer than a brown. So, can you make it browner? <laughs> you. Yeah. If the board or the neighborhood wanted, and the neighborhood wanted it browner, it can be browner. It can probably be almost any color manufactured by this company, um, except pink. <laughs> okay. Color will be an open item of that if it's approved. Fine. Any other comments? Right. Can we ask about other things other than just landscaping and? If it's a new top, only if it's a new topic. Yeah, well, um, so the removal of the invasive species in the rest of the property, is there a plan for, for controlling other invasive species other than what's on the habitat, the protected habitat? The, there is a plan for the habitat. The balance is the, the conservation restriction that will be entered into between five colleges and either the municipality or the, um, uh, the conservation organization, which has not been determined. That will dictate how it's used. In fairness, usually that dictates how you physically use it, not that you're going to pull up certain invasive species. Um, but it does control what you can cut and what you can remove. Um, so if there is some particular interest that you have in an invasive species, certainly we could try to get into the conservation restriction that that could be managed. But the entire 35 acres that's going to be put under restriction will be managed. Um, I don't want to represent to you that they that the uh, invasive species will be removed or managed, but the parcel will be managed. And if it's appropriate to remove invasive species, I suspect it will be done. But if there's some particular species, we can look into it. And, you know, I realize that the, the land has not been farmed for a while, and there's probably a lot of stuff growing there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, I do think of the sumac which has, is really abundant and gets a foothold and it's, it's really tenacious. I am not a gardener, but I Everywhere. understand it's very difficult to get rid of. Any other comments? Okay. May I make one final statement? I will be brief. I know you don't think I am. <laughs> <laughs> sure. Yeah. Um, one of the things I want to do is just sort of very quickly reiterate why we're here and where we think we are. Um, and as you all know, we started with uh, getting an opinion from your town council and from five colleges corporate council about the Dover Amendment. And I just want to make sure that we get in the, the fact that the Dover Amendment does say that an ordinance may not prohibit, regulate, or restrict the use of land or structures for educational purposes on land owned or leased by a nonprofit educational corporation. Provided, however, that you may do size, bulk, and regulate those. And your bylaw, your, zone, your own zoning bylaw, basically says the same thing, that it is an educational use is allowed in this zone. Um, sex uses shall be subject to height, yard size, lot area, bulk setbacks, open space parking, building and coverage requirements of the underlying district. So both in your bylaw and in the state law, it, I think it's very clear that this, this use is allowed. We've been through all of the other issues. We meet all of the dimensional requirements of your bylaw of the underlying, of the underlying zone. So I, I just want to strongly urge you to consider whether or not you like the bylaw or whether or not you like the statute, 
The state law says that this is allowed. The town law says this is allowed. So I would really urge you to consider that when you vote. I, it's no secret that some members of the board aren't thrilled with this use. Maybe all of the members of the board are not thrilled with this use. But I urge you to consider the fact that your duty to the citizens of Hadley is to represent them within the confines of the laws of the Commonwealth of Massachusetts 